To God be the glory. Let's include our brothers and sisters who were affected by the recent flood. Some of them are still in the evacuation centers and others are still busy cleaning their houses because of the mud and the debris that uh, entered their houses. At may mga nagsabi na ngayon lang man ito. Kasi sunod-sunod yung floods. But in reality, more than 100 years ago, Sambuanga City experienced a terrible flood. Uh, kaya lang, wala, marami sa atin wala doon during that time. In fact, after the flood 100 years ago, the local government drew a map indicating places where it is risky. I just saw this on the internet yesterday. Uh, merong color coding. Because if you look at Sambonga City as a whole, siguro yung plain is only about 10%. Yung mga bundok is about 90%. So, pag yung bundok ay napuno ng tubig, it goes down. And in that map, um, dark blue, very risky area. Dapat walang mga tao doon. There is the medium blue and there is the uh, light blue. Uh, but unfortunately, this map was never followed because later generations, yung hindi nakakita nung baha, they built their houses everywhere. Some even built their houses along the river bank. Uh, hindi po pwede yun kasi there has to be a 20 meter easement from the river. Kaya lang, ang ugali natin pag may bakante, Allah, butang tagbalay, bisag naas ba, ba sa buaya. And it shows in that map that napakaraming lugar sa Sambuaga City that are risky. And if you happen to see that map and you see the blue, the dark blue, my suggestion to you is if ever you insist on building in that area, siguraduhin nyo na yung bahay ninyo mahaba yung legs. Mga 10, ten feet. Hindi ko lang alam anong itsura ng bahay na yan. Uh, tickling. Nung sa taas, yung legs ng bahay mo mahaba. Or, you put floaters under your house so that when the water would rise, your house will also rise. Pero siguraduhin mo lang na nakatali yung bahay. Uh, baka sa tugbungan kukunin yung bahay mo. And this is the reality in Sambuanga City and I hope we will pray for our local government that they would initiate a flood control project like what Butuan City did several years ago. Because Butuan City, every year, binabaha yung lugar na yun. When the Agusan Mars would swell, all the water would flow to the city of Butuan. But uh, 25 years ago, I think, they initiated a flood control project. It's a levee which is about 7 kilometers long and I think now they are free from floods. So, uh, according to General Yanga this morning, there is no money to start a flood control program. And I think they will start from uh, San Bernardino Bridge. Are you familiar with that area? All the way to Tugbungan. So, if your house is five meters there, tanggalin mo na yung bahay mo dahil dadaanan ng easement, yung levy. So let's pray that our city will experience freedom from floods in the years ahead. I was looking at the number of countries under different kinds of governments, and I noticed that 52 countries are under dictatorships. You understand what a dictatorship is? one person governing the entire country or a group of people, a party 
governs the entire country, and there are about 96 countries that are under democracies. So, mas marami pala yung countries in the world that follow democracy compared to countries that are under dictatorships. Now, whether as God's children we are under dictatorship or democracies, we live in those particular contexts. Uh, we cannot escape. As long as we are in this world, we live inside a community governed by men and women. At the same time, we are also members of God's community. So, dalawa yung status natin. We are, we are under a human community, whether dictatorship yung community na yon or democracy yung community na yon. At the same time, we are also members of God's community. So, the question is, how do we balance the two? And how do we behave as God's people in these two contexts? We have a guide, and that is found in the book of Romans. Can you open your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3 to 8? I think last Sunday we started with, with Romans, chapter 12, 1 and 2. So, today we will look at Romans 12, 3 to 8. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and its member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. May God bless us upon the reading of his words. Under the human community, we as God's children will continue to live our lives at the same time under God's community we also have to recognize that we have certain things to do under God's community but there is a difference and we have to distinguish between human community and God's community we should not confuse them the first difference between a human community and God's community is that in a human community, everything is governed by law. Do you notice that? Lahat ng ginagawa natin sa human community is based on law. We cannot escape that. Everywhere we go, there is a law governing the land, Law governing the waters, law governing the sky, law governing how we put our houses, how we travel, law even uh, on our identity as an individual. Everything is governed by law. And in the community of men, the human community, there is this idea that a person possesses ranks, Position based on law. A president becomes a president, a prime minister becomes a prime minister because there is a law that provides. A king, an emperor becomes a king or emperor because there is a law. Sometimes they are the ones who wrote it. In a democratic uh, society, the representatives of the people will write the law. Always law. 
When you go out there, there is always a sign. Do not enter. No parking. Pero nagpa-park pa rin. I can see that uh, every time we go home to Ebenezer, yung sa San Jose Guso, ayaw ko kung bakit hindi natapos-tapos yung bridge na yan hanggang ngayon. Ang laki ng signboard, do not park kasi masikip yung daan, nagpa-park pa rin, kaya nahuhuli ng pulis. So in the human society or human community, everything is based on law. But not in the community of God's people. In the community of God's people, we are not governed by law. Instead, everything is based on grace, as you have read a while ago. Apostle Paul said, For by the grace given me. So everything that we see in God's community is based on grace. Which means that there is no place for arrogance in the community of God's people. In human community, you see this. When a person has a high position, when a person has a high rank, or he has achieved things, accumulated things, the tendency is to be proud. Kuminsan hindi ko maintindihan yung mga wang-wang. Okay lang yung wang-wang ng ambulansya. Pero yung wang-wang na hindi ko makilala kung sino yung nakasakay, and kailangan mag Itabi natin yung sasakyan natin para makalusot sila. My question in my mind is, what rank do you have? But that is in the human community. When a person achieves something, when he has a position, a rank, he thinks he is higher than others. But in the community of God's people, Apostle Paul said, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought. Why? Because in the community of God's people, we are all the same. We are sinners saved by grace. And so nobody is above everyone. Even if in the human community, we accumulate a lot of things, but the moment you are in God's community, you have to remember you are just like everyone else. You are taken by God from this pit of sin, miry clay, and He has given you a new status, a new name, by grace. And so there is no place for arrogance or pride or even competition because each of us are recipients of God's grace. I remember that I told this story perhaps to some of you, but for the sake of emphasis, I would like to relate this again. Dr. Rodrigo Tano became the president of Kamakop several years ago, and last year, he died. But when he was a young pastor, a fresh graduate from Ebenezer Bible Institute, he became an associate pastor of Sukabon Alliance Church. That's where we came from. Bago lumipat sa kanilar ang church, sa Sukabon muna tayo. He was an associate pastor for one year, very young pastor, and then he was assigned in Kidapawan. Kidapawan was already an old church. Perhaps it was started in the 1920s. And so when he was assigned there, someone whispered to him, Pastor Tano, you are a very young pastor, and you are going to a church that is already old, and uh, members there are mature, the elders, especially the chief elder, is very perfectionist. When you go there, you should be very careful. And he said, what would I do? Look for this person and kiss his hand because he has a high rank in the community, a high position in the community. How would you feel if you are a young pastor, a fresh graduate from Bible school, and you are told to be very careful, you go to a church because the people there, og sa Sibuhano pa, mga banggiitan, magbantay ka, haluki ang iyang kamot. Pastor Tano went to the place, preached for the first Sunday he was there, preached the message that God gave him, and to the surprise of everybody, the person whom they said, 
kailangan halikan mo yung kanyang kamay because he has a high rank in the community and you have to be very careful what you say. He was the first one after the, ser- the sermon was given. He was the first one who came down to the altar, knelt down, and cried in the presence of God. You may be somebody out there in the community. You may have a rank, you have probably a position, but in the community of God's people, you are just the same as the rest. You are a sinner saved by grace. So that's the first difference. Here in the community of human beings, you see a lot of competition, you see a lot of arrogance and pride. But then in the community of God's people, we know that we are saved by grace and everything is based on that gift that God has given us. The second difference between human community and God's community is our response. In the human community, since everything is based on the law, lahat may batas dito, batas doon, our response usually is compliance. You understand the word compliance? Dili na to gusto, pero tuman lang ta kay mahadlok man ta, puspusan ta. We are afraid of the punishment. So when a law is given, we comply. You have to register your SIM card within 180 days. Otherwise, you cannot use it. Oh, sige. Registro good. You have to pay taxes because you will be penalized. Oh, sige. Buy it. We are not happy when we do that. Are you happy when you pay taxes? I have a friend who said, Pastor, dako kayang akong ibayaran nga buhis. Pila man, 25,000. Ah, ingon ako, dako ka kita. Otherwise, the government will not impose taxes on you if you have not, if you have no income. Have you seen people in the BIR office rejoicing that they are paying taxes? None. They comply because it is imposed upon them. They do things because it is an external pressure on them. But not in the community of God's people. In the community of God's people, our response to God's grace is faith. Do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Since we realize that we are under His grace, then our response is by faith. We do things because we believe that this gracious God has granted us so much that nothing we can do can equal His generosity. Kahit anong gawin natin, hindi natin mapantayan yung ginawa ng Diyos sa atin. That's why we are so glad to serve Him. It is faith. We respond to Him in faith. We are not like other organizations that will penalize you and will check attendance. Uh, Nandiyan ba si kapatid? O wala. Kung wala, i-penalize natin siya. We don't do that. Because we believe that in the community of God's people, we respond by faith. And it is faith that motivates us to participate in God's ministry. I think I mentioned to you that there are medical students in Davao City that came from India. Last Sunday, we were there in that church. And as I was preaching, I noticed a group of Indian medical students and after the, I preached, they came and they asked for prayer. And there were, there were tears in their eyes. And I said to myself, Lord, you're so gracious. Regardless of the color of the skin, regardless of the culture, you have placed faith in the hearts of these young people. They are away from their homes. Nobody told them to go to the church, walk from their dormitories to the church. It is because they are grateful to God 
that God has given them the grace and they responded by faith. So in the community of God's people, there is no coercion, no compulsion. But in human community, many times we respond to laws by mere compliance. Huwag sa Sibuhano pa, sugot pero pungot. Muhimo lagi pero murag magbagot-bot matod pa sa mga sibuhano. We complain a lot because it is something imposed from outside. But in the community, community of God's people, the motivation comes from within. And I believe that you are here today. Some of you perhaps, yung mga bahay ninyo dinaanan ng baha, you are still cleaning the house but you are here tonight. Why is that? Because you believe that you are under God's grace and you respond to Him in faith. So first difference is in the community of men, in human community, everything is determined or based on the law. While in the community of God's people, everything is based on grace. Therefore, there's nothing that we can be proud of. The second is in human community, most of the time we respond to the law in compliance. Not really from our hearts. But in the community of God's people, we respond in faith. And the third difference between human community and God's community is how we function. Napansin po ba ninyo how we function in the human community? Early in the morning, a driver would wake up, drive his jeep all day, come home at night. A lawyer would go to his office the whole day, come home in the afternoon. A doctor would go to his clinic the whole day and then come home in the afternoon. A business person would go to his business the whole day and come home in the afternoon. We function based on the profession that we have chosen. Pumili tayo ng isang trabaho na gusto natin and if ayaw natin yung trabaho, we can change it. We spend four years preparing ourselves to whatever profession we choose. If we are employees, we wake up early in the morning, we go to work, we come home at night, and if we do not like our employer, we can change our employer. We can change the place of our work, but not in God's community because we do not function that way. In the human community, we function based on our professions. We chose that. But in God's community, we function based on the gifts that God has given us and the calling that God has granted to us. It's a big difference. Iba talaga. But sometimes we confuse. Sometimes we bring the human community into God's community and don't kuminsan nagkakagulo. And uh, kuminsan, yung standard ng uh, human community ay pinapapasok natin doon sa community of God's people. But in the community of God's people, we function according to the gifts that God has given us. We do not choose that. It's chosen by God for us. Our professions, we choose that. And we can retire from our positions. If we are an employee, ang una nating tinatanong, Kailan ang aking day off? Kailan ba ang holiday? Kailan ang bakasyon? But in the community of God's people, and the illustration is like the, or the human body, the parts of the human body would never ask the question, Kailan ako magde-day off? Halimbawa, magtanong ang kidneys, Kailan ang holiday ko? Ano mangyayari sa katawan? What if the heart would say, uh, holiday ngayon, day off ko ngayon. I will not do my responsibility. The body will suffer. That's why malaking pagkakaiba sa human community and the community of God's people because in the community of God's people, we function in accordance with the gifts. 
if we belong to the body, we function not thinking. Hindi natin iniisip yung iniisip ng mga tao na nasa human community. That's why I had a chance to be with the senior students of Ebenezer Bible College and I told them, the moment you are invited to minister to a certain church, never behave like an employee. Instead, behave as a spiritual leader of God's people. Malaking pagkakaiba yun. Because when you behave as a spiritual leader of God's people, you are there for them no matter what. Kasi yung empleyado, gagawa lang siya dahil binabayaran siya. Pag hindi siya contento doon sa bayad sa kanya, he can change his employer. But not in the body of Christ. Whatever God has entrusted to us, we do it diligently, we do it faithfully, and we do it cheerfully. Ano yung assignment na binigay ng Lord sa atin? Ay ginagawa natin for His glory and for His honor. So three differences. In the community, in the human community, everything is based on law. In God's community, everything is based on grace. No reason to be proud. In the human community, we respond to laws in compliance. But in the community of God's people, we respond in faith. In human community, we function according to the professions that we have chosen. But in the community of God's people, we function on the gifts that God has given to us. And this is where the community of God's people is different to human communities. Because we behave differently. And so whatever God has entrusted to us, we don't have to compete with others. We don't, we don't have to envy what God has given to others. Instead, we do what God has granted to us in the power of the Holy Spirit by the grace that He has given. I read a story about a man by the name of Robert Arthington. I don't know if you have heard this. You might Google that later on if you want. Robert Arthington he was an Englishman. He was born in England. And he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ when he was just in high school, I think, about 14 or 15 years old. And when he accepted Christ, talaga mainit yung kanyang puso to reach out those who are lost. But God did not give him the gift of preaching. Hindi siya marunong mag-preach. Hindi nga siya marunong magkanta. But he has this heart that he was willing to share with those around him. So when he was uh, in high school, he rented a room, just a room. He cooked his own food. He slept on the floor. He used a wooden box as his table, a wooden box as his chair. Yun lang. And when his classmates who were in heat would come, he would share with them. Marami mga estudyante dito. Alam niyo ang buhay ng estudyante. Walang pera. And yet, Robert Artington was willing to share with his friends and classmates who were in need. When he was in college, he also rented a small room where he cooked his food, he slept on the floor, used a wooden box as his table, and a wooden box as his chair. Hindi nagbago yung kanyang lifestyle. From high school to college. And during college, he met some missionaries. And out of his meager allowance, he would share this to the missionaries. In college. When he graduated from college, he started his own business. He again rented a small room cooked his own food, slept on the floor, used a wooden box for his table, a wooden box for his chair. Hindi nagbago yung kanyang lifestyle. 
kahit may negosyo na siya. When God blessed him with $10, he would buy his food and other necessities and the rest he would send to the missionaries. When God blessed him with $100, he bought his food and other necessities and sent the rest to the missionaries. He stayed in the same room. Hindi nagbago ang kanyang lifestyle. When God blessed him with $1,000, $10,000, $1,000,000, he bought his food and other necessities and the rest he sent to the missionaries. Doon pa rin siya sa maliit na kwarto na katira. Siya pa rin ang nagluluto na kanyang pagkain. Doon pa rin siya natutulog sa sahig. Yun pa rin wooden box ang kanyang table, wooden box ang kanyang chair. And then he made a will that when he dies, all of his assets will be given to missions. When Robert Artington died, his estate was valued at $5 million. And everything was given to missions. He died inside that room. He never changed his lifestyle. When his friends buried him and they tried to clean the small room, they saw an, a note inside his belongings. It was an old note. Perhaps he wrote it when he was in high school. And it says, I am willing to stay in a one-room house cook my own food, sleep on the floor, use a wooden box for my table, a wooden box for my chair, as long as the heathen will find salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was not a preacher. He never went to places, but hundreds of missionaries went to many places through the generosity of this person. Because he believed that his life was a grace from God and he had to respond by faith and function in accordance to the gift that God has granted to him. To God be the glory.